Hey y'all, welcome back or welcome to some of our new viewers. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. I'm Morgan and I like to do book reviews, unboxings, or general bookish content like today's. Um, if this sounds interesting, why don't you check out some of my other videos and uh, maybe hit the subscribe button to join our community. Today, I'm going to be doing the mid-year freakout tag because we have almost reached the end of June. I cannot believe it's almost the end of June. I'm so excited. Big things, big things. So let's get into these questions. For those of you who don't know, the mid-year book tag is just kind of a rave rant type of video where there's 13 questions and you talk about either the ones you've loved or haven't so far this year and the ones that you really, really want to get to through the rest of the year, like what your book goals are, kind of. Question number one is, what is the best book that you have read so far this year? And this one's really hard, like going by the numbers and even maybe even enjoyment, I don't know. Going by my ratings though, it's not like one. I started the Stormlight Archive this year and so I kind of all of the Stormlight books so far are technically my highest rated books this year. Uh, enjoyment wise, I would say there's also like two more, uh, probably the Kaiju Preservation Society because oh my gosh, I just had so much fun with that book. And um, hmm, maybe City of Dusk because that one was, oh, that one was super enjoyable as well. And it just, that one really took me by surprise. I thought it might be a good book, but how much I enjoyed it was super surprising. Question number two, what is the best sequel you've read this year? So this one's really hard. One, I don't think I've read that many sequels yet this year. And two, I don't want to repeat answers like Stormlight, because of course I read the second one to that one. Though, I think Words of Radiance made me a little bit more upset about some things than Way of Kings or even Oathbringer. Oathbringer fixed my upsetness at some of the things that Words of Radiance did. So I'm not sure. Going through my books, there's very, very few sequels that I've read. So it, I guess it wasn't very hard then for this one to take it, but this one was a very good follow-up. A lot of times the sequel might not be as strong, might suffer from middle book, but being a duology, I guess you can't call it middle book. Uh, for the Throne is a wrap-up kind of to Hannah Witten's Waterwood series. Question number three is a new release that you haven't read yet but want to. There could be so many things for that. I'm going to narrow it down though to the ones that I actually bought and still haven't gotten to yet because these were on my anticipated releases radar and I just have not been able to do it yet. And that would be Engines of Empire by RS4. This is a fantasy book but it's less um magic magic because there are guilds and machines and obviously you know empire building and uh, it sounds super interesting and i really really want to get to it it came out in january though i only bought it like a month or so ago so yeah maybe in july i hope and also which could have also counted as a sequel, but I haven't read it yet. So, Hunger of the Gods by John Gwain. I think I said his name right. Which is the sequel to Shadow of the Gods, which I enjoyed, but not quite as much as I hoped. Me and the characters just could not click together. So, yeah, I still really want to read this. I want to get to um, get to understanding more what's happening in the world, follow their adventure some more. So really need to get to this one as well. Question number four, what is your most anticipated release? This one was very hard because there are so many new releases that are coming out that I want to read, I want to get to, and you know, I'm nervous, excited for it. But I've narrowed it down to one of the biggie ones that I can't wait for. And that would be The First Binding by R.R. Veridi. Oh, I really hope I said that right. Go read the description so you can see what it sounds like to you. All legends are born of truths and just as much lies. These are mine. Judge me for what you will, but you will hear my story first. I buried the village of Ampor under a mountain of ice and snow. Then I killed their god. 
I've stolen old magics and been cursed for it. I've started a war with those that walked before mankind and lost the princess I loved and wanted to save. I've called lightning and bound fire. I am legend and I am a monster. My name is Ari. And this is the story of how I let loose the first evil. It comes out on August 16th. I can't wait. I'm probably going to get this one. Also because the cover looks so cool. Question number five is your biggest disappointment. This one's really hard. This is really hard. I have it. I have had a few this year that I didn't care for. That just weren't um, my cup of tea. I don't know. It's very hard. Maybe though, I'm gonna go. I tried to read something my author that I'd read before, and I'd liked kind of the beginning of the series. I ended up they were going back to finish the whole series, but um, that would be a uh, PC cast and Kristen cast when they came out with. The Sisters of Salem, and I read book one and two in March, I think. And it just wasn't, it is a YA series, fantasy-ish series, and about witches. It just wasn't there for me. No. No, not going to finish that series either. So, I guess that one would have to be my biggest disappointment this year, but I am... It didn't have super high hopes going into it though, considering how I'd left off with the House of Night series. But still, I was kind of sad that it didn't even start super strong. Number six though is Biggest Surprise. Um, there's been a lot this year who were like, wow, that was, that was pretty good. Hmm. Okay, I know, <laughs> I know. I'm gonna say the Kaiju Preservation Society because it sounded good, but there was, you know, there could have been room for problems to happen, but I didn't expect for it to be so funny. I thought it would just be an interesting, you know, alternate history take with monsters, but I don't know, to me, it was just supremely funny. The, Jamie's wit and his interactions with the other doctors and stuff. I, I really liked that book. It was short, quick read, and just interesting and funny. Yes, I'm going to go with that one. Surprise me the most. Okay, number seven is new favorite author. This one is also super hard because I've read a lot of different books this year, which would be like my first time reading from that author. And um, several times, that's a, I've only read one book by that author. And so it's like, ah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I want to read more of John Scalzi, though, after reading the Kaiju Preservation Society, so maybe. Uh, really finding that I'm enjoying Michael Crichton this year, like I read Jurassic Park last year, and Andromeda Strain two years before that, uh, yeah, during the time of COVID outbreak. <laughs> and um, State of Fear this year, and I'm like, wow, I'm just liking all of his books. So maybe. Uh, Hannah Witten, I have enjoyed both of her books, so she's also a contender because seeing that she can do a strong follow-up is very important. It's always disappointing when the first book is great and they can't come back and continue with it like something is missing there. Another one, Emily Henry, I finished Book Lovers and I loved it. Oh my goodness, that one. I love the way she did her character, so now I have to read her other ones, People We Meet on Vacation and Beach Read. And if those hold up, the her characters and those do, as well as book lovers, then I'm going to be like, I like you. You're, you're going to be my new comfort read person when I need to pick me up because fantasy made me sad. Because, oh my gosh, everything is evil and going horribly. Number eight is newest fictional crush. And I don't really have an answer for this one. I don't know. I don't know who to say I have favorite characters, but that's another question. Number nine, then, is new favorite character. So, since I started Stormlight this year, I could say Wit. He's not main character, but I still think it counts because Wit is just awesome. And I love sarcastic characters. Something, you know, resonates between me and the sarcastic characters. Another one would be Taya Last Strider from City of Dusk of the Dark Gods series. I liked her 
character arc and story transformation in this one because it wasn't your normal, you know, character growth there. I, yeah. And she wasn't always a good character. And so reading from her was super enjoyable. I liked um, her friend, Risha. Yes, Risha. Oh, I could pronounce that. Um, hers was more knowledgeable and growth and stuff like that and discovery, but Tessa is really bringing in the darkness of the, the Dark God series, and I really liked her in this. Question number 10, books that made you cry. So I couldn't really think of any others early this year. Maybe something made me tear up. Probably. I don't know, but I don't remember right now. But these two I read recently, and I know that there are parts in both of them that, um, that really made me tear up. The first one would be The Stand-In by Lily Chu. This one, the whole book was pretty alright, it was good, but there at the end, with her and her mom, who has uh, Alzheimer's. So her mom is not always really present right now. She's uh, spending a lot of time in the past, speaking Mandarin. And it's one particular part where, of course, her mom is um, always going to, because it's a very thing she's regretful for. And so for here at the end, after she's found out something, and she's able to... Um, kind of forgive her mom for it and somebody else is introduced and yeah it's a very, it's a very big thing where she's telling her mom and the other lady is there and saying it's okay we forgive you I I'm sorry it happened but we forgive you you know and it's, yeah and huh and the other one that um that made me tear up, which is really, really weird, would be uh, The House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. Uh, it was at one point in the middle when uh, Bryce is pretty much out there on her own fighting the demonsies, and she's on the phone, though, with the, the big people in charge at their little meeting, and she's like, you have to send, you know, the, the shifters, you have to send the police protector people to here, uh, there's a lot of demons, and they're like, well, we can't. We have to protect our area. And she's like, but there's children. And she's like, there's children, and they can't defend themselves. And, like, the, the head people are like, no, no. The pack has to say where they are. I have to defend our area. And um, the, the secondary people in charge that are there are actually in the city, and they're like, don't worry, Bryce. We're coming. And I was like, oh, my God. I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. Just reading those simple, simple lines they are just so sweet and it's like yeah number 11 is a book that made you happy for this i'm gonna say the kaiju preservation society because it was so funny it kept me laughing through the whole thing and book lovers because their whole relationship everything it was just so funny so cute and yes yeah i like sarcastic Thanks, obviously, so they both just worked for me. <laughs> like him and her talking about the dating scene in New York, and she's like, yep, I was just fishing in a pond of toxic waste. And he's like, wow, you are so much weirder than I thought you were. Ha, <laughs> it speaks to me. Number 12 is the most beautiful book you've got this year. And I'm not sure. I haven't gotten that many special editions or anything this year, but I got the uh, UK editions of the Skyward series, and these covers are definitely much prettier than the US ones that's just got like, you know, her face. So yeah, these are definitely prettier. Or the Forging Silver into Stars. I love this cover with all of the silver here and our swords and stuff and your little forge there. So yes, this was a lot of pretty. Um, so far, I think those are the prettiest ones. I have uh, others coming in later in a few months, though, that are probably going to be prettier. Question 13 is a book that you need to read by the end of the year. How are we supposed to narrow that down? Oh my gosh, there's so many. All right, things that I want to start this year, for sure. I'm going to start the Expanse series. I got to start it this year. I don't know what TBR is going to be on, what the dice is going to let me, or... I'm going to just add it in at some point. I have to read Rhythm of War because that way I'm ready for when 
the next Stormlight book comes out, and I think that's next year. I don't think it's any time this fall. I'm pretty sure it's next year if I remember the news right. And the third one, um, Hunger of the Gods. Gonna get to Hunger of the Gods this year, for sure. And then you know all the um, other new releases that are coming out. Gonna work them all in. Well, this was a really fun challenge, trying to only come up with one book per question and realizing that that just wasn't possible for most of these questions and myself. I would love to know, though, what some of your answers are to these questions and if you're reading anything interesting right now. I am so looking forward to the next few months of what's coming out and I can't wait to get to them. I will try to have my anticipated releases of what's coming out soon next Wednesday probably and I hope you guys are finding something great to read today and we'll have a lovely rest of your day. I'll see you guys later. Bye!